In number two, we're going to start the same way. We're going to take eta of three and divide by eta of two. We're going to call that eta a, and that is 2.67 minus j.36. Then we want to rotate, again, d over lambda two. We're going to rotate the same distance, 0.4 wavelengths. Eta A is shown plotted here, rotated 0.4 wavelengths towards the generator. We're going to wind up here, Eta B lossless. We're la labeling that Eta B lossless because the material number two is lossy, so actually as we're rotating around the Smith chart, what this should be doing, this Eta A, instead of rotating at a constant radius from the center, it's actually going to be spiraling inward closer to the center. And so we need to find out just how far towards the center of the Smith chart it's going to be by the time it's rotated 0.4 wavelengths. So to do that, we take the radius here out to A to A, and I'm going to use this scale here. We're going to start at zero, and we're going to measure out that distance along that scale, and that will be our reflection coefficient magnitude for eta b lossless. We need to multiply this by e to the minus 2 alpha z in order to take into account the loss. So this right here is 0 0.46, that's the reflection coefficient magnitude at a to b lossless, and e to the minus 2 alpha z, for alpha we can plug in the value that's provided. For z, we just want the thickness of the slab number 2, so we can just plug in our thickness given in d, and when we do that we get 0.51. So when we multiply 0.51 by 0.46, we are going to get 0.23, and that is equal to the reflection coefficient at B when, after we take into the lossy nature of the material. Now that we have the actual reflection coefficient magnitude at interface B, we're going to go from this origin and we're going to measure out to 0.23, this value right here. And that distance now we're going to measure out right here from the center of the Smith chart the same distance, and that tells us where our eta b lossy actually is supposed to be after taking into account the loss. So now we can read off eta b lossy, and I'm going to call this denormalize because we're going to denormalize it. We get 1.1 plus j.5, and when you have to multiply this times eta 2 to denormalize it, and we wind up with 143 plus j 90. In part b, we can find the reflection coefficient at interface b, and we're going to use the lossy eta b. And we're not using the Smith chart for this, because that would not take into account material number one. So when we plug everything in, we get 0.24 plus j, 0.27, and in polar form, that's 0.36 at an angle of 131 degrees. Then in part C, if the reflection coefficient tells us how much of the electric field reflects from the material. And the electric field squared, we can relate that to power, then we have to take the reflection coefficient magnitude and square it to see how much of the incident power is reflected. And so we're going to get 0.13 or 13% of the incident power is going to be reflected by this slab. Part D is just a general question about what happens to the power that is not reflected by the slab. And we can imagine that some of the power will get absorbed by the lossy material, by slab number two, uh, material number two, so I'll just say slab, 
and specifically with each passing of the wave, each time, you know, if we have a bounce diagram of uh, material number two, if there are multiple reflections, each time the wave propagates through that material, it's going to decay by e to the minus two alpha d. The power, the power is going to be absorbed. Uh, e to the minus two alpha d, that factor, which is 0.51, that is going to be absorbed by the material with each passing. So otherwise, if there, every time, if there's any, whatever part is transmitted, uh, the rest of the power will be transmitted beyond the slab to material number three.